Greetings, Professor Nalepa here with DubSpot.com. Thanks for tuning in. In this week's Ableton Live tutorial, we're going to take a look at a technique that's got a number of different applications. It's a compositional process I stumbled upon working on this track Pomegranate Dub a few years back. It essentially involves taking some source material, grabbing some short loops out of that source material, loading them up into different cells here in the session view, mapping the keys or pads of your MIDI controller to trigger those clips, then turning this global record button on, and then essentially performing that live and recording everything here in the arrangement view. So for this example, the source material we're going to use is the Virtual Boy remix of my track Sunflowers. Virtual Boy are students of mine, former students that I had them as freshmen. They are graduating this year. They are absolutely killing it right now. This week they opened up for the Glitch Mob in Michigan. Played a sold out show for 6,000 people. Really proud of these guys. They just have a brand new EP out on Alpha Puff Records. Symphony Number no. None. It's a really outstanding body of work. And uh, we've got a link on our blog page on Dubspot to free downloads of the track Mass off of that EP as well as the remix of Sunflowers and Pomegranate Dub. So let's take a look at this technique. So basically, I'm going to turn the loop on for this this track here, for this clip. All right? And I've got it set to a length of a one bar loop. I like to either work with length of one bar or maybe two beats, basically half a bar got to find what works best for the for the source material. And for this example, I'm going to actually let's speed this guy up. I'm going to turn to 140 BPMs. So let's take their sort of hip hop tempo and we'll speed it up. So now the the key is to go through here and find a nice inspired loop. So I'm just going to click on the position here and just kind of browse through and see what we got here. All right, I like that. It's got a nice jack and feel. Much reminds me of classic Prodigy. It's got some super blippy action going on. So now that I've found something that I like, I'm just gonna move this down one to keep it separate. I'm gonna go under the edit menu. And I'm gonna choose duplicate. The keyboard shortcut is Command D. And what that does is it duplicates this clip. Now I'm gonna trigger this other version of it here. Let's find a new loop that we can work with. All right, I'm feeling that. Nice and tough. So let's duplicate this again. Command D. Trigger the next one. Find a different loop. All right, liking that. Those will go well together. So what I'm going to do next is trigger these clips at different time and record what I'm doing into the arrangement view. So to make it easier for us to keep track of everything, let's go through and change the color coding of these other clips so that they're not all yellow. So this way we can tell them apart when we're looking at the things in the arrangement view. All right. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit that global record button to turn that on. And first I'm going to go to the MIDI map mode. And when I click that, anything that's turns highlighted here can be mapped to knobs or faders or keys on my MIDI controller. So I'm going to click on this cell here that contains that yellow clip and I'm going to hit a key and you can see it shows up right there and do the same for the other two. And so now that those are mapped, now note that these are mapped to the actual cells, right? So when I turn off the MIDI map mode, when I play the these keys, it's triggering the clips that are in those cells. So if I were to move this clip up, for example, when I hit that key, it's actually triggering the cell still. Now if I go to the MIDI map mode, you can see it's still mapped and there's nothing in there. So what it's doing is it's playing that stop button. All right. So just remember, they're not the mapping is not attached to the clip itself. It's actually attached to the cell where this clip is living. All right. So now that I've got that going, all right, I'm going to record enable here, and you can change your quantization. Right now, we have the global quantization set to one bar. There's keyboard shortcuts for this up here as well. Let's do one eighth note. Command seven is the shortcut. So now I'm going to go through and record myself triggering these loops. <laughs> OK, 
screen, you can see as I've been doing this, every action that I do in the session view is written here into the arrangement view. All right, so basically I can go through now and edit this further. I can actually go and figure out, hey, is this working? Maybe there's some section that was really good, but then I hit a wrong note or I came in a little late. So you can see, actually, I triggered this guy just a little bit late. So I can scoot him over and um, maybe, you know, I go through now and I just take these two orange and red guys and I go through and I'm just going to duplicate it out, do my own editing. So just Command D. All right, so what I essentially did there was I gave myself a good skeleton outline, and now I go back in and I finesse it, all right? That's the essence of, of how this works. You can also do other things as well when you're doing this, like, for example, loading up some send effects in here and then mapping the send knobs to your MIDI controller as well. So pretty basic stuff, I know, for some of you, uh, but this is uh, a really fun way to go through and kind of create a track on the fly in the studio that has a live human performance element to it. So if you really get crazy with your effects, uh, you can get some really interesting stuff going on here. So I'm going to go through and set these up, go to the MIDI map mode, click on the parameter here, turn the knob, turn the knob here as well. And now those are mapped. So when I get out of the map mode, you can see I turn them there. So one other thing I want to show you, if you duplicate this clip, and let's go through and just keep track of everything. I'll change the color of it. You can also do in MIDI map mode, you can map the position here of the loop. So if I was playing this clip, I can actually go through and map another knob to actually scroll through the position of the loop. So check this out. So if I'm playing um, this purple guy, right? So I actually like to do this when I'm when I'm working sometimes. When I'm searching for something that's pretty inspiring to me. Alright. You can actually kind of just turn the knob and it actually will go through and, and jump around the different elements of the source material. And then if you have the record button on on the top, you can actually go through and it will record what was playing at the time. So this is another fun thing you can do. So if I'm playing this clip, Okay, all of that got recorded here. So maybe some of it is just not working. But maybe like I hit on something there that's really inspired. I just go through, grab that bit of audio and then duplicate it out a little bit. All right? So if I was to go through and turn this record enable on, I go through, start turning the knobs for the send effects. Maybe I'm not actually triggering any clips, just kind of focusing on doing my effects. Or you're doing both together. But now that I've gone through, you can see it shows up there. This little plus button will take whatever parameter is selected here. So in this case, it's the send that's going to the reverb. I drop that down. Now I can see this uh, automation on its own. Click here on the other send. Hit the plus button. You can see. So if I did something really great on this parameter, I can actually copy this, go here and Command C, and I can paste it on uh, another parameter. So I can actually go up here and paste it there, and it will actually <laughs> copy that curve for me. All right, so this is a really great technique for doing remixes, spicing up old tracks of yours in the studio. Uh, I recommend experimenting, diving in, see what else you can come up with. If you come up with something cool, let us know. Feel free to post a comment down below with what you found. Again, I am Professor Aleppo with Dubspot.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.
Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.